Welcome back to another segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. Today, I am taking more of your questions in a segment of Ask Judy. A question here from Laura. If you had a choice to play a character on a TV show that you watched, what show would it be and who would you play and why? I thought a little bit about this. I mean, there's any number of shows that I've watched and loved and seen characters that I thought would be a lot of fun. One of the ones that stood out for me was I always loved Downton Abbey and it would have been fun to play Lady Grantham. Uh, she was American, so although I can do an English accent, it might have been a little intimidating to do an English accent amongst all of those actual Brits. <laughs> uh, I would have, I think, been a little self-conscious there. But she was American, uh, so that would have been fun. But they were just, I think Julian Fellows writes wonderful and very witty material and with a lot of depth as well. I felt that the storylines were always interesting. I loved the layers to it, the scenery, the house was amazing. So to have been part of a show like that and play a wonderful character like Lady Grantham would have been a lot of fun. A question from Dave. Judy, I was wondering, you often say a person is a delight to work with. From the standpoint of the job, what makes a guest actor good to work with as far as their qualities and how they act on a set in your opinion? Uh, I use that term when I feel that someone was not only easy to get along with, both on and off set, they also were very professional, well prepared, they brought interesting choices to the character, they really brought it to life in a very believable way, and when people are great to work with on camera, they're right there with you, whether you're both on camera or whether they're off camera while it's your close-up, but they really engage with you. And when two actors have that happening in a scene, it, it helps to bring out the best work in both of them. Uh, we're trained to do that regardless of what kind of performance is or isn't happening opposite us, but it's so much nicer when you're working with other actors who really care about the work and, and want to make it a collaborative process. So that would be my various different reasons for calling someone a delight. And oftentimes they're fun when the cameras aren't rolling, not that that's imperative. And sometimes if someone has a really heavy uh, kind of character that requires a lot of heavily uh, uh, emotional work, then you kind of want to give them space so that they can prepare however it is that they need to prepare. That sort of rolls into this next question from Hornet King, who says, I would love to know, you and Richard specifically always captured intense moments with tearing up. Was there an eye drop that would be, would add tears, like in a sequence with Jim Bob during the dead guinea pig sequence? Or did you have a process of getting yourself emotional to tear up in certain segments, like in the typewriter where Richard and I had that emotional work? Different actors work differently and have a different process. Uh, in some cases, uh, glycerin or would be put on a person's face so that it would reflect the light on that to show up as tears. Some actors, although they could produce a very emotional scene, didn't particularly produce their own tears. So that was something that could be done if needed uh, as long as the emotional work was there. For some of us, being able to create tears was easier. Uh, I, I couldn't tell you why one person can and someone else has difficulty with it. Uh, for me, it's been, it was something he does ask, always wondered where you folks go in your heads to hit those emotions since they are always so believable. Uh, I had been doing theater from the time I was very young and TV stuff where I needed to be able to produce that kind of emotion. I would say that a number of things over the years were things that I used. Most of the time I would work to create it within the scene. Uh, for instance, in Day of Infamy, where that letter is being read that Kurt left, uh, that Daddy reads after he's gone. That was much easier to produce that emotion because the letter was so emotional and the way Ralph read it. So generally, if I can just buy into the circumstances and really believe that those circumstances are real, then it's much easier to do that. 
um, you know, grief, like any other emotion, anger or laughter, is it's a kind of energy. So finding that energy. And, and when I was coaching students, sometimes I would have them start with, with the breath, just as a cue in. I'd have them, you know, start some, you know, get the energy in their body moving in a certain way, because it's very, it's like trying to squeeze water out of a dry sponge. If there's nothing happening, it's just, you're like, uh, trying to push a rock uphill. So getting your energy going, uh, things like that, I found made a difference. Once I had my child, I found that doing scenes, this was after the Waltons because I didn't have my son till after the Waltons. I found that doing scenes where as a mother, I was upset about things with my child was so much easier because I could just completely relate to being a mother and all those concerns and fears and whatnot. So I think every actor will give you a different sense of what their journey is. I know you had another question here where you said, where are the houses used in certain episodes like the Tabor Place in the episode in season four where A.J. Covington comes back to shoot the movie? Was that a dummy set facade? Uh, so there were certain areas of the Warner Brothers lot that were used a number of times. And I think a lot of those houses were in various different parts of either what I referred to as Midwest Street, or that was like where... Uh, Kurt and Mary Ellen's house, where Dr. Vance's house was, where Mrs. Brimmer's boarding house was, uh, where Jenny, where the Pendleton house was. So any number of houses there could be used. Now those did have rooms inside, but they were not rooms where you could actually shoot in particularly. So those interior sets would always be shot on a soundstage. The things on the back lot, again, there was really virtually nothing inside. They were pretty much facades, like Ike Godsey's store was pretty much a facade. And there was a little kind of cottage, little house that was right near Drusilla's Pond on the other side that we frequently used, and they would just change it up. It was used in the in the episode, the ceremony for the house that that, that family stayed in. And it was used for various different other things. So there was houses along the jungle area of the back lot that we would use. And a lot of them were just facades. So thank you very much for your questions. Next question is from Gary. Uh, let's see. It wasn't until a few years ago that I learned that TV shows and movies aren't shot in chronological order. Did it happen often that it climactic scene was filmed way before, say, the opening scenes. I don't know if it was regularly happened, but it certainly did happen because you did have to shoot based on location, based on whether something was an interior or an exterior. If we finished shooting a previous show, because we shot six and a half days, we would often finish a show on the half day. So after lunch, the new show would start. If we were on the back lot, we were going to start the new show on the back lot. So they would, if, if those scenes were more climactic than things inside the house, then it could be that you shot it. Uh, if we were inside, then we'd start with inside scenes. So it definitely happened. It could be tougher sometimes. I didn't find it as tough on the Waltons because we were, for the family, for the regulars, we were always playing scenes. So it wasn't as if you had to come into a new show, getting to know new energy with a cast and do heavily emotional scenes right away. In that case, we were grooved in already. So to do an emotional scene as a first scene of a new episode didn't really make as much difference to me as if it came towards the end of a previous episode because the dynamics of the family and the sets and the whole crew, everything was there for us. I think it would have been tougher for a guest star coming in if that was their first scene. And I would find that sometimes when I worked on other people's shows, if I had to come in and do the really heavy scenes first. But it happens and you deal with it. All right, another question you had. With the advances in filming, do you think it would still take six plus days to film a 44 minute episode? I wasn't totally sure. So I did some checking around. And if you look on the internet, it tells you all kinds of things, but 
my guess, and which did seem to be the most prominent answer, was that typically they are seven to eight days, even nowadays. And certainly a show that has a lot of action will take longer to shoot than a show that is more character driven in, in, in that way, and a lot of just interaction between characters without a lot of physical action to shoot. Last question was, were there ever any episodes that initially the cast didn't like, or you didn't like, that you now see in a much better light? Nothing specific comes to mind for me on that. I do know I've talked about how I, like a lot of you, felt that the first five seasons were the strongest when everybody was there and we were still very young and the dynamics were such of the parents raising young children. But then I'll look back suddenly at an at a episode from season six. Richard Thomas was gone in season six, and yet we had episodes like The Children's Carol, The First Casualty, Grandma Comes Home, which were just incredible episodes, or season seven, Day of Infamy, you know, one of my favorites, The Empty Nest, another strong episode. In season eight, The Unthinkable, you know, we were dealing with then issues relative to the war and what was going on and for a young Jewish man that was uh, serving with Jason to talk about what was going on with um, the Nazis and, and, and the Jewish population. It was just a really intense episode. And then even in season nine, the outrage, that wonderful story about Harley Foster being accused uh, and jailed and then the last 10 days, which I thought was some of Eric's best work as a prisoner of war in a Japanese prison camp. So when I look at those and remember all of the great work and episodes that were done in season six, seven, eight, nine, that's when I kind of think, all right, maybe not every episode was great in some of those later seasons, but we certainly had some standouts. That's what I have for this segment of Ask Judy. I'll be back with more of your questions in another segment of Ask Judy, and I'll be back with more behind the scenes of the Waltons. Thanks for watching.